that the Kazuan Magani Market Project symbolizes. The first is the history of the market. This is a market that has been burnt down many times in the heat of ethnic conflicts. And there is no point looking for who was right or who was wrong, only to say that the destruction of a place of trade and commerce is bad for everyone. Loss of jobs and the goods and services that the market provides. No matter what our grievances may be, we must never burn down public facilities. It hurts the people that we claim to want to assist even more. So there are many important and difficult lessons that we have to learn about the importance of community building, partnership and tolerance amongst our people. This is, very, this is all very important because of the need for us to understand that we must live together. Our country is great because of the diversity that we have here, religious diversity, ethnic diversity. From everywhere, you, from everywhere in this country, we have great talents. The more we are able to work together, the greater our country will be, and the more successful each of us can be individually. So I appeal to everyone in this community that this is a time for coming together, is a time for uniting, is a time for working together. And we can do great things if we work together. These lessons must be learned. But in learning these lessons, it's also critical that the history of this market does not prevent us from moving forward. And I'm extremely pleased that the history and antecedents of this market have not prevented the state government from moving forward to ensure the reconstruction of the market. It's important that this community in Kaduna State also looks forward and creates a new narrative for this market, a narrative that is built on growth, unity, togetherness, economic progress, and development. The second theme that this market symbolizes is the effective coordination and collaboration between the federal government and the state government, the Kaduna state government. The Kaduna state government's commitment to rebuilding and modernizing this market is commendable. I'm also happy that the Ministry of Power through the Rural Electrification Agency, partnered with the Kaduna State Government to create a sustainable, clean source of power for the market. The 100 kilowatt solar PV mini grid built by Blue Camel, I understand is planned to go up to 500 kilowatts. And the managing director just spoke about that a few moments ago. We hope it can go above one mega as the market and economic opportunities here grow. It's impressive that the Kaduna State Government has been able to achieve the repositioning of the Kaduna Market Development and, and, and uh, Management Company. And I think that this is an exciting prospect indeed, to have a management company that is able to deliver quality projects on this scale without any direct interference from the, from the government itself. We must commend the management and also commend the, the state government. The Galaxy Mall we just visited, as well as this project, the Kazuwan Magani, are both products of the focus of the Kaduna state government, ably led by the governor, Malam Nasir Rufai, on enabling commerce and improving the economic prospects of its citizens. The federal government and its agencies will continue to partner with the Kaduna State Government and other state governments in furtherance of the development and growth of the Nigerian citizenry. I commend Malam Hafiz Bayero, the Dynamic Managing Director of KMDMC, for the great work on both projects and his zeal to reach out and create partnerships with colleagues in the federal government 
and the private sector, and also uh, to uh, Tama, his uh, deputy, who has also done very, very well indeed. It's important to note that the funding mechanism for the solar PV plant today would not have been possible without the intervention of the Buhari administration. Despite the passage of the Electric Power Sector Reform Act in 2005, the activation of the Rural Electrification Fund, or REF, was only commenced in 2019, 14 years after the act was passed. The Rural Electrification Fund provides capital subsidies in a clear and transparent competitive process to qualified electrification projects and companies, focusing on mini grids, solar home systems, and grid extensions. In the two Rural Electrification Fund cycles so far, more than six billion worth, six billion naira worth of projects have been executed with 42,000 connections being created, impacting an estimated 200,000 Nigerians. I'd like to commend the Ministry of Power, ably led by the Honourable Minister, and the IRA for continuing to expand the Rural Electrification Fund. The federal government will continue to find innovative ways to expand the financial capability of the fund. And it's also important to note that the uh, Rural Electrification Agency itself has begun state-focused grants that allow state governments to provide matching funds for qualified projects. And this, I understand, will continue. With the focus on climate change, there's a key focus globally on renewable electrification that will take advantage, or that we can take advantage of, especially to, to expand the Rural Electrification Fund and make it a revolving endowment to provide electrification for our most underprivileged communities. I've heard about the unique design of the new market and the reorganization of the 942 stalls to encourage interaction and partnership amongst the diverse peoples of this community. This approach in social interaction and interconnectivity is a very laudable one. And I, and, I must, and I must commend the state governor for his foresight and for his understanding of the way that these things have to be done in order to ensure that everyone feels a part of the community and, and there is fairness and there is justice. I'll also, uh, I, I must also say that the interconnectivity that has been created between the peoples and among the people of these communities is one that ensures that our joint and common interests as Nigerians outweigh our ethnic and religious differences. And that is what we must always bear in mind, that everything, no matter what religion we belong to, no matter what ethnic group we belong to, we are first and foremost Nigerians. And if we do, if we, and, and if we work together, we can live peacefully, everyone can prosper. Fairness, justice, equity, we must just always keep that in mind, at the back of our minds. Fairness to all, justice to all. And I'm sure that we will achieve every one of our objectives. I, for one, hope that this thoughtful approach to market planning can be replicated across the country. In closing, I'd like to thank the Kaduna State Government for inviting me to this historic commission and, of course, I must uh, thank uh, His Excellency the Governor for his very kind and generous comments uh, that he has made about me. I'm sure that um, it will create even more trouble for me after. <laughs> but anyway, I would also like to commend the, uh, to, to commend the Kaduna Markets Development and Management Company for a well, uh, job well done. Again, uh, Hafiz Bayero, uh, Tamal Nandu, very, very well done and members of your team. In the same vein, let me also appreciate uh, the very uh, dynamic team at Blue Camel, led by Yusuf Suleiman, and the IRA team, led by Ahmad Salidu Ahmad, represented today by the director of the REF. They made the electrification of this project possible. 
We must also thank the CCECC for the exceptional and prompt construction of this market. And finally, I would like to acknowledge the efforts of the Special Advisor to the President on Infrastructure, Ahmad Zakari, for coordinating discussions among the parties to conceive and execute the solar PV project at the Kazwan Madani market. Well done, all of you. God bless Kazuan Madani. God bless Kaduna State. God bless the Federal Republic of Nigeria.